All right, so today's question is what microphone should you buy? There's many different microphones on the market and a few different types too. So where do you even begin? I'm gonna give you a few simple steps to consider when you're ready to buy a new mic and you can use this process anytime you're ready. So let's just jump into it. You might be wondering why I pulled up a picture of this old dude holding a Martin acoustic guitar. Well, that's because it all starts at the source. We have to identify where the mic is going to go on what instrument. So in today's example, we're going to use the acoustic guitar and figure out what mic best suits this instrument. So now that we've picked our source, we know where the mic is going to go. It's going to go on this old dude's Martin guitar. We need to describe what it sounds like. What does an acoustic guitar sound like? Say if you're just in the studio and you're jamming out and you're listening to your guitar. What does it sound like? Is it bright? Is it articulate? Is it transient? Or maybe it's a full bodied sound, more of a finger style sound. We need to identify what we're going for. Do we want the full bodied sound? Is it a solo? act is it just vocals and acoustic in the song where the acoustic is really just going to fill up the space or is it going to be placed in a dense mix where you're just going to hear mainly the strumming and you want to just get the rhythm and force in the song i'm curious so i did a google search to see what the frequency response is of an acoustic guitar if you don't know what frequency response means I'm going to get into that a bit later in the video. But what Google says is the fundamental frequencies mostly sit in the 100 to 500 hertz range. So this is where the body, the mid range of the guitar is, and also where we perceive the pitch of the instrument. Also says here extends all the way upwards to 15k, 20k hertz. So that's where the high end, the top end, the, the, the flicker is of the guitar. Let's go back to our two options. So we either have a full bodied acoustic guitar for the solo artist that just has vocals and solo acoustic, something that's going to fill the spectrum, or we go with a more of a strumming part where it's going to sit in a denser mix where we specifically just want to hear mostly the top end and a bit of the high mid information. Let's go with option two for this video. And now we need to identify what type of microphone is best going to suit a strumming acoustic guitar that's got to sit above other instruments in a dense mix. So our three options are going to be either a dynamic microphone, ribbon, or a condenser mic. So here we have the SM57, it's a dynamic microphone, very common, you see it on acoustic guitars, cabs, snare drums, it's very mid focus, not too much low end, not too much high end, but really it captures the essence of most instruments, so it's a good affordable mic, good go to mic. Let's have a look at the next type of microphone, that's going to be a condenser mic. This is the AT2020. It's going to be bright, articulate, very sensitive. So it's going to capture all the strumming parts of your acoustic guitar. And it's going to allow it to sit nicely in the mix. So this is a great option and very affordable mic too. Let's have a look at the last type of microphone, which is the ribbon microphone. This is the R121 microphone. And if you've seen it, if you've used it, you understand why it's so amazing and the price is pretty high up there it's not an affordable mic but i just want to describe to you what you're going to get from a ribbon mic it's going to be very natural sounding the top end is going to be super smooth and not hyped and for the most part it's going to be a flat response across the board low end mid-range and high end the cool thing with this mic and other ribbon microphones is that this has a figure eight puller pattern. So what that means is that it's going to pick up equally from the front and the back of the mic. So if you're in a nice studio or in a nice room, 
you're really going to pick up the space and the ambience of that room. You're going to get more of a natural sounding recording. So the winner is the AT2020 or any other condenser mic that you like. It's going to be best for this application because it's a super transient mic. It's going to pick up all the top end that you need for it to sit in a dense mix. More so than the ribbon and the dynamic mic. And you know what? I think he agrees. So before I let you guys go, I just want to do a quick comparison of the AT2020 and the AT2035 by Audio-Technica. They're both condenser mics. The 2035 is, I believe, 100 bucks more than the 2020. When I'm looking at microphones and comparing them, I like to look at the graph. It tells me a lot. It tells me the response of the mic, how much low end, how much mid range, how much top end. So in this example here, the 2020 has less low end than the 2035. That could be a good thing if you're recording an acoustic guitar and you don't need all the low end, especially in a dense mix, it's a great option. The next thing that stands out to me is that the AT2035 has a roll off switch. So that's a pretty powerful thing, especially when you're on stage doing some live sound and you're using this mic and there's a lot of rumble on the stage, a lot of uh, other instruments bleeding into each other. So this range tends to build up. And what that switch does is you can quickly turn it on and it's going to remove or tame some of that low end that's coming through the mic right at the source. Going back to what these both sound like, the 2020 has a pretty flat mid-range response, which is great. So it's gonna have a very natural sound in the mid and upper mid frequency. With the AT2035, it's got more of a colored mid-range. You see there's like, there's a little bump here, little bump here, little dip here, and another bump here. So it's not as flat, it's not gonna be as smooth in the mid-range. Looking at the top end here, the AT2035 has a more hyped 2 to 8K than the 2020, and also a more hyped 10K to about 16K. So if you're on the fence about both these mics, there's one thing that really stands out to me, and that's the roll-off switch. So if you need that, if you're doing live sound, and you want to have access to a roll off on the mic, go for the 2035. But if you want a microphone that's going to be less colored, smoother in the mid range, and a little less top end, go for the 2020. All right, guys, that's all I have for today. Hopefully this helped you out and showed you a process that you can do when you're selecting a mic for any instrument. I know a lot of my followers are vocalists, and they're looking for a mic to record in their bedroom or just have a mic that they can use that's going to sound good one little trick you can use is search up a vocalist that you love one that you just you love their tone of voice could even be similar to yours and see what mic they're using and then you can find that mic or a similar mic that's gonna help you record your voice if you have like a top end heavy voice you might want to complement it with a warmer microphone and vice versa. Anyways, uh, to leave you guys off, let me know what mic you're considering to buy next and what you're going to be recording. I'd love to know. Let me know in the comments below. And please subscribe and like if this helped you out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.